Hello, today's our presentation title is a Moving Target Defense and Software Defined Networking Approach. This demo will be presented by Secure Networking and Computing Snack Research Group at Arizona State University and Athena Network Solutions, LLC. By the definition of a Department of Homeland Security, MTD is to convert our current static, reactive, cybersecurity countermeasures into a more proactive and dynamic fashion. It depends on the intelligent uh, decision model to change the system over time in order to limit the exposures of vulnerabilities and opportunities for attackers. So SDN is a good enabler for MTD due to its uh, programmability and virtualization approach. So our demo will be based on a testing environment to emulate a data center systems. So we have a two cloud servers, which is connected through the virtualized networking systems. So it's, it's SDN enabled. Uh, our solution is focused on the secure center, which including the security analyzer and the controllers to control the network component in the system to perform detection security analysis, and a countermeasure deployment. So we have a four phases to lay out the procedure in our solutions. Uh, in the phase zero, we set up the security analyzing environment by scanning the system vulnerabilities and to build up attack graphs for later security analysis. For phase one, we, we are get into the detection mode. Uh, we can detect the system's network traffic to identify potential breach explorations. So we can plug in various uh, detection models to identify known attacks, advanced persistent threats, distributed network services, and those are zero day uh, problems. So in the phase two, based on the detected events, we can perform analysis to choose a good countermeasures. And also we need to change we need to check if these uh, countermeasures can cause any policy conflicts in the systems. Then to resolve it. Based on selected countermeasures, we're going to deploy it through the network controller. And then we go back to the phase zero and the phase one to update the system security scenarios. And then to update the security situation as well. So our demo will be based on these four phases. Uh, today we're going to have um, four people to present the demonstration. And uh, at the beginning, I, I just gave a brief overview regarding to the source live systems and also the environment we're going to deploy. Uh, our environment based on the source lab implementation, it is a virtualized platform uh, allow uh, allow developers to construct a network environment for fast testing and prototyping. So later, our team members, they're going to use a source lab environment, we call it a mobile sphere, to demonstrate all these four phases involved into uh, the MTD solutions. So in this section, we want to discuss about the security analysis and vulnerability detection component of our system so we have a cloud network with a lot of virtual machines and if i perform the vulnerability scanning for this cloud network what uh, i can see is that some of the systems have vulnerabilities so the red ones indicate the service port has vulnerability so if i click on some individual machine and try to identify the vulnerability identifier it shows me this is the identifier for this vulnerability so what we can do is we can generate a attack graph for this system with high level of vulnerabilities so you can see the attack graph is a giant complicated one and if i check the details there are about 418 edges and 352 attack paths by which an attacker can exploit your network. If I take some countermeasure action like blocking certain port, 
and redirecting traffic through to honeypot and if i generate my tag graph again what i'll see is a smaller graph with reduced number of vulnerabilities so the floating values indicate the conditional and cumulative probability that a attacker can have when he starts from root node and try to exploit this uh, uh, when he starts from leaf node and try to exploit this root node and we have all the paths listed for the attacker to exploit this network so we can also have dynamic alerts for this attack graph which include the network IDS information so if I try to generate a graph with dynamic alerts so the circular ones indicate the intrusion events that we got from network IDS so somebody tried to do a scan and privilege escalation on a vulnerability that was present on a certain port. So this uh, shows there was an open port and somebody tried to perform a privilege escalation as you can observe from the vulnerability information. Hi. Uh what I'm trying to show you here is two different type of attacks distributed uh, denial of service attack and advanced persistent threats of attack first I will start with DDoS attack uh, in our real environment we are simulating the different type of DDoS attack like sim flood uh, in map scanning and uh, ICMB flooding so as you can see here we have different uh, compute nodes each one hosting uh, our introgen detection system that is set up to detect like a signature based attack so once uh, this uh, our introgen detection system detect those attacks it will uh, send alerts to our uh, controller our controller then based on the threat level of those alerts it will deploy countermeasures and it will instruct the uh, switches to deploy the countermeasures and uh, the, our countermeasures here it's redirecting those traffic to uh, a honeypot system to understand more the attacker behavior and deeply investigating that if we go to this part attack graph and we apply attack detection then we can see how our introgen detection system send alert and if we go here to the alert now we can see like uh, scan in map in uh, from this host machine uh, 192.168.1.4 targeting uh, targeting 192.168.1.6 and the same on and this in this machine we have like a remote login from uh, machine dot 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 one dot five in machine one dot one dot four uh, and then we can deploy a counter measure which is as I told uh, it's counter it's uh, redirecting that traffic uh, now I will pay back to the advanced persistent threats attack as you can as you can see from this figure here the attack model we are assuming the attacker is outsider and it will collect like general information and this is like applying the social engineering and then it will find what is the user in an organization preferred website then they can target that website and inject it with the malicious content so this user from uh, an organization when they visited their system will be compromised once their system are compromised we are deploying uh, we simulating an IBT scenario there we consider this is the attacker now is compromised this machine so this machine in our system we simulate these attacks where the attacker try user attempt user escalation and then run a scan for machine uh, like vm3 which is this machine then it find there's like remote login access vulnerability then they can get that vulnerability and once they get this vulnerability they come from machine 3 they will do another uh, scanning and they will find FTB connectivity uh, vulnerability so on, on uh, machine VM1 then that when they got that connect connection using FTB protocol they will like 
log to vm1 and then uh, try like uploading an authorized file and then from there they also can do like buffer overflow and also can use the vm1 as they already did with vm3 and vm7 as a cap as a step stone and continue multi-stage attacks how we detect such information or such this uh, abt uh, activities we actually like uh, correlating different events from different logs we take an, an, uh, an alert as a trigger so we will take those information like ib and timestamp and then we will correlate like different uh, events uh, from different logs and we will try to extract some facts these facts we call it a dynamic alert which is it's not like what we have in the system vulnerability where i could just uh, show you that uh, the attack graph it will show the system vulnerability however here we are combining these two to have an extended graph generation this can include abt scenarios from that we can our evidence uh, our expert system can show the evidence if there is a vulnerability system vulnerabilities and if there is like uh, malicious uh, event happening in the system there is like a big indication that attackers already has explored that and uh, based on that we can deploy explore we can deploy our countermeasure if those vulnerabilities have not been explored and exploited then we can schedule it for like uh, deploy a countermeasure uh, this is the end of uh, my part thank you Okay, so we're going to take a quick look under the hood of uh, what's happening in this environment. When attacks are uh, detected and countermeasures are put in place, one of the things that we need to ensure is that the decisions you make, the countermeasures you implement, that they don't have any conflict with existing rules and uh, with, with SLAs and policy compliance or regulation requirements, regulatory requirements. Now, my dashboard here shows uh, two different uh, open flows, which is one for each of the compute nodes that are present in our environment. And if I manually insert uh, a few um, conflicts into it, what we'll see is um, if we go into the visualization tab, we can see all the different flows that are present in the environment. We can see 68 of them, in fact, actually. And if I click on the conflict tab, which pulls up this nice, beautiful little graph or uh, uh, visualization of all the different conflicts that are present. And I'm going to click on one of them um, just so uh, we can take a, a further look at it. Now, this basically says that rule number 66 here has conflict with two different rules. Highlight over them and gives you the, the information you want about them. Now, Ideally, this whole process is transparent to the user and they would not even know that uh, this process is taking place. But if the admin wants to retain some measure of control and uh, they want to see the conflicts that are present and, and make decisions manually on how to resolve those, that's uh, why this visualization engine is present and uh, the, the administrator can make decisions uh, according to what they believe is best for the environment. So this slide describes the demo setup. The introduction was provided by Dr. Dijang Huang. The system setup topology, vulnerability scanning and attack graph generation based security analysis was introduced by me, Ankur Chaudhary. I am a PhD student at ASU specializing in network security. The attack detection and countermeasure selection was introduced jointly by Adele and myself. Adele is also a PhD student like myself at ASU. The security policy conflict detection and countermeasure selection was discussed by Sandeep who is a PhD candidate at ASU. This work was done in collaboration with Athena Network Solutions. The CTO of the Athena Network Solution, James, has been very helpful in development of this solution and providing technical guidance for the success of our product. Thank you.